Okay, and we're live today, which is awesome. Doing another art stream. Uh, pop right over to that. Yesterday we got quite a lot done. And I hope the, the same is true today. You know, quite happy with the, the progress that was made. Um, talked about a lot of stuff, and I'm probably... If I accidentally rehashed some things I talked about yesterday, uh, let me know because yeah, there was a lot of things that were, were talked about from, you know, relationships, mental health, uh, body positivity slash body neutrality, um, you know, how bad I am at art and like just so much stuff. So, I, I also just don't have a lot of topics that I can talk about and be interesting with. Um, I don't really have much interesting going on in my life, so that's, you know, this is, this is the most interesting thing that I have going on. And, uh, yeah, I mean, today's stream takes place uh, before I have D&D &D later on in the day. And, you know, put out a load of laundry to, to dry while I'm doing the stream. It should be dry by the time the stream is done, which would be perfect. So, uh, today we're doing the... We're doing two things, actually. I'm thinking... I do have the overlay and the idea of, like, you know, making it pirate ship themed. Uh, obviously for, you know, pirate aesthetic, but, uh, at the same time, I also might be doing, I guess, other things. We'll have, we'll have to see. Uh, I had an idea for something, I guess, to, to spruce things up a bit for in front of me, uh, like adding a little table, something like that for when doing, like, talks, maybe making a a room of some kind. I'd have to go ahead and find, uh, find, you know, some, some reference art for that, but it, it's an idea. An idea for sure. And yeah, that, that's, you know, that's the, the plan for today. Um, and we'll, we'll see what happens. I uh, hope everyone's having a, a good day that's watching. Uh, wonderful, hopefully start of a uh, wonderful weekend for everyone. And yeah, very, uh, very low key today. Still, still a little bit under the weather. Uh, it took a lot for me to end up actually managing to get to sleep uh, yesterday following the stream. Had a had an interesting time. Hard time sleeping, but you know, sometimes it just it is what it is. You can't really, you know, change your sleeping habits uh, nearly as much as you you'd like to. But anyways, that's uh, beside the point. Let's get to some art, shall we? So, I have this set aside for the, the table, and I'll decrease uh, pen size for that. I'll actually look into some reference art for that real quick before we, you know, fully start up. Absolutely nothing. A lot of it's like background stuff, which is not really what I was looking for. I was looking for something more front facing. Uh, okay. That's 
It is what it is. I have, uh, I have a few pieces that I can add as reference art. Uh, let me just pull it up and find it. Very simplistic, you know, but should do. Good. Something, something like this, just for general, general shape, uh, would be, you know, nice. Make sure it's pretty much as big as I can possibly get it. Do a quick uh, trace of it, get the general shape down. Make sure that I have it on the right, uh, right thing going forward. So, you know, looks something. This There's a little space in here. Add the extra leg in the back there. And do that across. Do the same thing here. A little bit less of a little bit less of a hole this time. And there we go. Cool, cool. Um, now pop that back to size. straight line across and with that I can just now hide my reference images and yeah use this as the I guess the base for everything so let's get details as its own separate thing and I'll do those I guess I'll do them in the same no I'll do them in a slightly darker color so that way it's a little bit more visible and uh, so way things kind of stay uh, similar. So this will be kind of like, oh, change this over. Following along. So that way I can keep it, you know, in the, the same dimensions of having it go across by, uh, by seven from here, but have it be three and a half from there. So this is where the seven begins. And this curves down. Two, 
wonderful. And you know what? To uh, to keep up with you know branding, uh, I was like to to have a little callback. And because I love the uh, the the logo that I made so much yesterday, uh, I think I'm gonna use that again. Just uh, using the the wheel. Uh, insert. Okay, gotta gotta shrink that down tremendously. don't look nearly as good when it's like this, but, you know, it's going to be a, a small little thing. Right here. There you go. It doesn't look nearly as terrible when it's zoomed out, though extremely pixelated when zoomed in. Let's do the same thing with this. Make it small enough to fit in the middle seamlessly. I don't mind if it's a little blurry because, you know, it's. Uh, the people who would see it would still, I, I guess, get the get the idea behind what it is. Assuming they've, you know, seen the logo and everything else that goes on with it. And then, yeah. Uh, down here is this. And it looks like I'm going to be a little bit uh, past what I'm you know, a little bit past what I was going for. But that's okay. Listen, working with keyboard and mouse, sometimes you'll make mistakes. It It's part of the whole uh, experience. I mean, even when using like, you know, a proper uh, drawing tablet or anything like that, uh, it, nothing's ever, you know, perfect, perfect, but as long as you're close enough to where you can be happy with it, that's all that really matters. There we go. And plus we have the ability to erase so I can make it look like it was always that way. That, like that was always the plan. Huh. Do I want legs for the table since I'm only going to be keeping it like... I think since I'm going to be cutting it off, I'm going to adjust it so that way it doesn't have legs on the table. Because, I mean, to be fair, Perry doesn't have legs. He has, um, at best, kneecaps. So, I'm sure he won't mind. Tables tables just like him you know but uh yeah I don't really have uh unlike what I usually do for each day uh, and for each stream I'm I wanted to have like you know a little discussion piece something that I could talk about but I talked about so much yesterday that I kind of lost like I, I ran out of stuff um, so, you know, something's going to come to me today, and when it does, I'll, I'll talk about it, and feel free to share things that you want me to, to talk about. Uh, yeah, I, I'm, I'm a person who kind of, I'll have my, my few things that I can talk about for, for a while, and then I have the, but usually I don't want to, like, kind of overshare or overdo anything, you know. And there we go, that's looking, look 
looking mighty fine. But yeah, you know, it's uh, man, just liking that a little bit more. The more that I look at it, it's very pixelated. But to be fair, if I tried, I couldn't really make it much bigger without risking the the rest of it being kind of messed up. Tablecloth. Uh, let's go with a blue since yeah, blue is blue is a nice color. shouldn't have it you know I'm not gonna have it go all the way to the edge I'm gonna have it stop uh, within two of the exterior and only go down one That way it's, you know, technically it will look a bit thin, but I don't mind that in this case. It's fine if it looks a bit thin. And yeah, shame I do have like such a dedicated cutoff time today. I want to see if I can finish off all these things today but I don't know if I'll have the time because I need at least an hour to you know prepare stuff before D&D &D tonight so that means I at the latest can stay until about five and sadly I had to start a little bit later than expected um, today but who knows maybe we'll actually maybe things will work out and I'll be able to get everything done move quickly and all that um cool so let me add table top none of that selected okay table top so thinking in like a Let's go in orange. I don't really do much stuff in orange. Um, I think I'll add a little Ooh, if I add a globe that's going to be tough to detail. But you know what? I'm willing to to do a globe that's a little bit tougher. Actually, that needs to be on a little bit more of an angle, something like that, going straight through, so. Yeah, there we go. That's looking, that's looking good. A little globe. Um, what else should I have? Uh, what else is fitting? Maybe a few candlesticks. Obviously procured legally, uh, you know, pirate only for the aesthetics, not for the, uh, not in action.
now had this been Perry know from, you yeah. know, his time as a D&D &D character, I'd say he's only, the only thing he steals is hearts, but, but not this one. This one's a lot, you know, quieter, more reserved, uh, relaxing. Let's add a little ink well over here too with a, a little thing coming out of it. That's a decent silhouette. I'm actually kind of happy with that. And uh, let's do that, that, and have landmass here that kind of goes down and then pokes out a little bit there. And then a little... There you go. Once I color that in, it'll look vaguely globe-like. But yeah, it's a nice little, little thing that I can put together. And now for the actual proper outline. Cool. So let's do table one. For the exterior of the table, I don't mind making it a too wide, uh, too wide thing. Oh, I'm on a racer. That would explain why it's not doing anything currently. Okay. Cool. And I might add on legs as like an after uh, thing to this this table here. once I get everything situated and yeah. Some days I wish I had a table like this, something, you know, big and fancy, but I'm stuck with a desk that I've had since elementary school, I think. Somewhere around there. It's, it is an old uh, table. Do a nice. Actually, you know what? I'm gonna search up. Uh, search up mahogany. Hey, uh, get that nice deep rich color, make them look real fancy. Um, save it to references. Three. Okay, wonderful, wonderful. That's gonna make it look even better. Having, you know, the proper colors in it. So let me pull this over as a reference image. Um, it would help if I had my reference images available at this moment. Let me oh, so I move that a little bit too far over. But yeah, nice. I, I love the the color of this. So let's go with. Right about here. Let's start off with a fill. Mm. I do like that. So let me duplicate this. And make it table two. Now, 
firstly, as part of table one, I'm going to color the remaining bits in around the edges. It's pretty much the same method I did uh, yesterday. Though with wood, I'm going to try something different. I don't know how this is going to work. I'm going to have to find the right brush for it. Dry brush might be what I need. Ooh, or I go with stamp flooring. That's wonderful. Now I just pick a darker texture. Go over to table two. And, uh, ooh, that is that is way too big. That's a bit too small now. Okay, I think, yeah, I think I figured out how this should work now, which is good. Add some nice little ebb and flow. Make it feel semi-realistic at least. And then pick a lighter color, do more of the same. slightly smaller scale. Kind of contrasting along where the, the wood is. Honestly, not that great of a not that great of a job, but that's why we have undo. I'm thinking now, using the darker color, I do an increased size on a separate layer. Table three. Okay, let me upscale this to like here. up the edges once it's there we go and now I do another layer table four and this is where I bring in the lighter one at a smaller size and just make random passes into it I don't know why I'm not feeling the, the lighter color at all. Actually, I don't mind that. That works well for me. Okay, now let me just get a, uh, a larger brush. Set it to table three, get that all erased and done for. Is it perfect by any means? No, but you know, it feels woody enough, I guess you could say. You won't even be paying attention to the wood with all the uh, the extra details on it, like uh, this layer, which I'll change up a bit. Um, so first, need me a table details layer. Go with that, grab my, where is my core brush? There we go. Uh, I 
let's make it right. Here, have it dip down under. that that looks great and then what I can do here is uh, actually let me get to the plan section Ooh. you know what actually I have an idea let me get my eraser pack and remove the yeah, remove the lightness from this lower layer. Okay, okay. I got the got the idea down. Okay, cool, cool. So make the under part darker. And the upper part the lighter part. So let me grab my where is my stand? floor correct wasn't none that said wood ah, okay good good oh actually this is one that would probably work better now that I'm looking at it okay so let me just I guess erase everything from that erase everything from that cool cool and let's make this considerably smaller okay so cool uh part four is going here i could make it even smaller actually myself off there uh, I'll race later to make it all nice and uniform which makes me now want to remove every single aspect of it and do it again properly Let's get the darker layer going on table three. Oh man, this looks so much better now. So happy that I discovered this one. It really, really makes a pop. Honestly, I could go all the all the way. Oh wait, gotta make sure that I do it on the right layer. Yeah, that that makes.
makes it look far better in my opinion. Makes it far more believable lines and there we go. Yeah, that's that's exactly what I'm looking for. And then I can erase these little excesses that snuck over. Cool. Now for part of details. Um, so I need this because this was the original ma mahogany color. And I'll make it a little bit darker. Uh, let's make it airbrush soft. See how that does make this thing a little bit bigger. I should actually Table details two and bring this just under. Oh, wait, gonna move number one in front of it, yeah. And make sure that when I redo it, it's on the right layer. A nice little feathered shadow here on this side where it might be noticeable to some but not noticeable fully and then as you transition over to this it becomes a bit more noticeable. Um, no, I don't like that nearly as much. Uh, oh, because I picked the wrong one. Just to add a bit of depth make sure that it is noticeable. line it got a little bit too overzealous and got where it wasn't supposed to be nice 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 okay so now I can remove this layer remove this layer I guess the obvious color idea would be to go, ooh, actually, I have a color idea in mind. Let me just snag it from from here. Uh, it's my favorite uh, shade of uh, purple. So let me uh, save an image here under references. Okay, cool, cool. Insert its reference layer. Pop up all my references. Oh, lovely, you're in the way. Perfect purple. And now let me table cloth. Outline. 
think, one right key there. Oh, sorry, sneezes. Um, yeah, clearly still not uh, fully 100% from yesterday. But I think I'm going, I have an idea that I'm going to use that uh, in a moment. For, for one of these things but okay let's let's start off with the the first lines make sure that they both fit uh, you may notice I'm doing a bit of a curve and there will be a reason for that straight line across the top. Cool. Oh, sorry, give me one moment again. Uh, yeah, the, uh, the nose isn't fully recovered from yesterday, but it's getting there. Now, with this, I'm going to uh, fill it in. Wonderful, wonderful. And then, I, once I make sure that it's all filled in, looking correct, yeah, it's looking looking good. I just need to do a quick little bit of erasing up here on this top edge. There we go. Um, I need to extend this corner out a little bit more. This one will extend out in a different way. No, I'm not feeling that. Uh, I'm going to duplicate this real quick. TC1. Now, I need a darker purple, more purpley purple. move the wheel uh, right there so it does get covered a bit but it's still not behind like the the table details
that looks looks nice. Clean, simple, and I'm going to oh god, I just realized I did that on the entire wrong layer. Well, thankfully, um despite mistakes being made, mistakes were made in such a way that it's not gonna pose a problem. That that's the good thing. Uh -huh. Okay, so now let's add TC details. And this is where that idea of mine came in. So I add a little bit of, oh, that did not work as expected. Uh, let's see how this looks. And let me severely limit that size till it's feels I don't know how it feels it just doesn't feel right in that way well actually it might feel right if I add some background to it so I'll, I'll stick with it see how it looks so I get the, the ball rolling uh, then add these layers outwards to kind of make it look like little little hangers off the, the edge of this. And now let me duplicate TC Deets 2. And then let me add this as a little background uh, to it. Actually, that looks really nice now that I did, did that. I really like that. I don't mind it at all. It, uh, I feel like it really fits. I might need to add a darker edge now to this. So give me one moment to go to like not wheel let's go create something about wheel uh, shading I'll call it even though it's not really shading hurts to add an outline sometimes. Yeah, it makes it makes it pop just that little bit more and now we're almost done with the table. Already that's uh really nice. I think you know what I'm going to do? Since I've added the uh, the the detail to to this uh, through through a different like stamp, I'm going to see what's available. See if there's anything that's like very thready or um, you know something that I can add 
you can just make rocks. Okay, that's actually pretty cool. Thick paint. That actually might not be bad. Um, Impressionism. Ooh, that actually might be rip. That might be what I'm looking for. Oh, there's a hair texture thing. I could have definitely used that when creating uh, creating Perry. Um, well, you know what? Another time. I'm gonna go texture noise, go to here, and make it just the faintest bit lighter. And then go to here. I will make it a, on top of this. Uh, just as a C. I'll name it test. Uh, that is way too big. Let's let's dial that down and oh yes, that's perfect. Adding texture without taking anything away from it, that's amazing. It really it's subtle but it's there. You can you can see a little bit of it but you know it would take someone who, who knows a thing or two about about it to really point it out and be like oh there's uh, a, a nice text nice texture you did there with the the fabric and I could be like oh thank you even though in reality I'm probably going to forget and someone's gonna mention it and I'm gonna be like oh I guess I did that even though, yeah, bad memory. Talked about it yesterday. But, you know, after an hour we've got almost all of this done, which is beautiful. Um, so let's make globe. Candles. do the same feather thing but it feels weird to do that in this scenario um, so I don't think I'm gonna do it specifically this time just for that reason alone and that it would feel feel weird doing it but now for the fun part um, what color should the earth be Okay, the earth portion, I think I'm going to make this color. Let me just, let me just see it next to a, uh, okay, that's actually, that's a pretty decent earth color. Make the water a tad bit brighter than what I have currently. You know, that looks right. Okay, cool. Looks, I'd say a little bit washed out, but like globes are never really eye popping color. Most of the time, at least the ones that I've uh, seen, they tend to be more subdued and uh, not nearly as as bright. And then I think this might do good for some ice caps little faint bit of blue in there but a bit better than actually I like that one more 
so I'll go with that. Uh, and then I'll need a slightly darker gold for the, yeah, for the stand. Okay, cool. So here's the, the plan. Let's go with, let's take this globe. Uh, actually, let's do it on a different layer. Globe, stand. So let's make a straight line, shall we? And then connect those straight lines with a curved one making kind of like a little, little happy smile. Have this be on the desk. And wonderful. And now afterwards we'll be able to add the, the rest. Uh, okay, so below water. watercolor I was going to use, which is this right here. And after drawing a, let me try and draw a circle in this, no. I need to start a little bit farther over. Don't mind that, because that's actually that's got a lot of uh, space to it. So let me fill this in real nicely, and you know it's coming along quite well. And the best part is you won't even be able to see the uh, the orange parts once it's. All well and good. Uh, let me move tabletop above, tabletop above it. Cool. And actually, you know what? No, I'm going to hide it. Make sure that's all properly filled in. There we go. And let's grab this color right here. And I think I'm gonna downsize it to one uh, pixel worth of thing. Get it right there. And ever so slightly down here too. There we go. I understand, did that wrong. Uh, let me grab uh, two, so I'll call it two. And then grab the color black. Do that all around this thing. So that way it has an outline. Nicely. Nice little relaxing art stream. You know what? Uh, since it was something I tweeted about this morning, uh, it was brought up like, you know, how did I come up with the name Perry now? And I answered pretty much my my first character that I ever put I don't want to say put effort into, but like it the first character that I made and like 
you know, went full in on every single detail of their backstory, every single, every single bit about them. Uh, he was that, like, you know, the first character that I did that for. And, uh, he's actually had multiple intera uh, iterations. Because originally I had played him in a one shot where we were supposed to, you know, play the character that we were going to uh, play for the the rest of the thing. And it, it never ended up happening uh, like that. It, it ended up stopping after one uh, session, which was sad, but I kind of was like, okay, you know. I have this character, maybe I'll use them again. And another opportunity arose where I could use him. He fit in with the world and uh, the DM was awful. Like he, he created, uh, for those of you who've watched Hunter Hunter, he created uh, his own like uh, DM PC uh, or DM player character which is often frowned upon depending upon how you use them. And in this case, he 100% was just playing this setting because it allowed him to play this character that he had created from a previous game. And it was it was not a fun time. Uh, pretty much everyone was gone after session five. And, uh, you know, my character, I, I decided that I'd make a in the hopes that like you know changing things i'd have my character make a heroic sacrifice of himself and the dm immediately was just like the character sacrificed himself for nothing and uh it was completely pointless and after that um even though seemingly in the context that it should not have been completely uh pointless what he did but you know um, after that, I left the, the campaign. I used a few other character ideas. Um, and then I came across another campaign, which, you know, again, another very promising uh, thing. And I was excited for it. And the DM specifically was making like a seafaring campaign, which felt perfect for creating Perino since he was, his whole thing was he was a pirate. Uh, and then that DM had to stop after uh, a medical um, medical issues arose uh, in their life, and you know they had a they had to stop sadly, which you know can't blame them for that happening. That's just bad bad luck uh, that that had happened at that exact time. You know, everyone wished him the best, including myself. And then we, uh, then I kind of went on, uh, played a few new characters uh, that were, they're all very different, but at the same time, they all have some very uh, distinct simu similarities. Um, but yeah, it was, uh, I, I finally got to play him very recently for a uh, um, I, I got I got to play him recently for a friend's campaign uh, he's uh, he was a player in my campaign that I ran uh, my first ever campaign that I actually ran through completion it was 52 sessions each one usually lasting about three to four hours so um, yeah, it was, it, it, it was a fun time, and uh, I guess one of the problems that we kind of ran into with, uh, we, we've hit like a little, like a minor kerfuffle, uh, and one of the problems is he's running a s setting, I guess, not too dissimilar from mine, and pretty much he, he feels like he's being overshadowed by my... Uh, campaign, which, I mean, first off, um, I, I felt like, you know, terrible that my 
campaign was causing him to feel bad about his. And then secondly, I was like, you know, a little bit happy that they thought my campaign was, you know, good enough to be worthy of that kind of praise. Because being told that, like, you've set the bar for something on your first try like that it was you know it was very very impactful for me and uh yeah it uh it 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 made me feel like you know all happy inside um but at the same time i'm like man i really wish uh th this wasn't a problem but it, it seems like we're, we're kind of like fixing everything and moving past that uh now and it's it's kind of behind us and uh you know hopefully in the next arc high likelihood my character's going to die if he does uh e even though there's magic in D, D to you know bring people back to life i don't like that so i try to for whatever reason i don't want i never want my characters to come back from the brink of death even in my own, uh, or come back after their death, they, uh, dead, they can come back at the brink of death, I don't mind that, but, uh, yeah, it's just, so I, I pretty much, I made a statement in character that, like, my, it, it, if my character dies, he's not coming back, or at least that's what his beliefs are, pretty much to tell the, the party, and they all just were like, ah, I guess we'll continue with it, uh, even though it's dangerous and deadly and whatnot, because they're we we all have the ability to come back, except we all don't. But you know. Actually, I had a nice little. A nice little system in mind, that I kind of put together. Um. Where. It, it was a little like homebrew element for mine and. Uh, when a person died, they would have the the chance to uh, they they would have the chance to you know be brought back uh, every single time. Though each time, depending upon the roles and everything, um, it would lead to them not being brought back the same. I guess you could say. So. If you died once and you were revived really quickly, um, it wouldn't cause any issues and you'd be able to just, you know, move past it. Y you might have like, uh, if you rolled really poorly, you know, at worst, you know, you're looking at some minor corruption or things becoming like, you're, you're more willing to do evil, even if that wasn't originally something that your character was into. And for some, if you, you know, you started off, uh, if you died a while ago and you were revived recently, 95% of the time you're coming back with pretty much insanity. And, you know, that's not something that people want obviously they want to be completely sane individuals they don't want to be uh insane so it was more for like npcs like one of the characters they they mentioned that they wanted their mother to uh have helped them escape uh a situation and i decided that you know to make things interesting, I'd have the character's mother uh, have that secret be found out by the father who's like a dictator uh, in this world and in this setting. And I, uh, I had him, you know, decide to end her existence. Um, and that led to, you know, the, the character trying to stop the uh, trying to re revive their their mother uh only for them to kind of realize that uh the first time that they they tried that the the mother obviously didn't come back the same and it led them to believing that the reality that they were in uh was not the real reality and it, it led to like you know a very cool 
uh, kind of dissociation from everything where they were just like, this world doesn't have consequences because it isn't real. And it caused them to do more brash actions. And obviously the players around them kind of just, they, they would fail to understand that it was like, they'd pretty much decided that this reality was uh, fake and that they were living in, not like a simulation, but they were living in a, uh, they could do anything because this was not real. And it did rub people the wrong way at times. Um, but they, towards the end, um, they were, they used a wish spell, uh, after the campaign had ended and they defeated the, uh, evil individual through, uh, smart tactics. I, I set it up so, um, if any of you have watched, uh, Naruto, there's a character Donzo, uh, in it who does some some really uh messed up things and uh he he has this through through uh with, without saying too much through very sketchy means he gets the ability to you know uh reset himself a certain amount of times based upon um you know he using uh sharingan that were uh you know infused into him we'll say and i decided to take that and run with it as the idea of you know my character the the villain being kind of like this all-seeing entity and thusly for every time that they the party destroyed uh or every single time the party killed i i say killed uh in quotations killed uh the enemy after uh on that turn they would immediately come back but they would lose uh one of the all-seeing eyes that they had and thusly uh the party was able to determine that hey if we destroy the eyes then they immediately uh lose that like extra health bar and thusly they turned a fight that could have taken reasonably hours into a fight that took uh a st still took like an hour and a bit but could have taken much longer uh had they not noticed it and the other thing was um because they had stopped like a a bunch of things earlier the individual was seen as like an imperfect imperfect vessel and thusly um they the party uh were able to you know change things uh, around from being uh it, it had the creature had its perfect vessel it would have had pretty much access to every single spell uh available had just been a max level spell caster uh with additional spell slots and just being a real a real pain for them to deal with but because they stopped it the individual could only um cast spells that they had seen so pretty much as the party uh, there was like a uh, few spell casters in the party and the more spells they cast the better the enemy got as they were able to cast the same spells and every single time they died all their spell slots reset so you know even if they burnt a high level spell uh, the moment that they died again, they would just have that the ability to cast it again. So it was a very tactical, smart fight, um, and they seemed uh, the party seemed to enjoy it, which was the most important part to me. Because if the party's not enjoying it, then clearly I've done something wrong in that case. But yeah, I'm I'm happy that everyone seemed to enjoy how things turned out. Uh, I made sure that each character had their own character moment. Because I, I focus on more character-driven stories than combat-driven ones. Mostly because I don't understand the combat mechanics. <laughs> uh, I, you know, I I, I, lo I enjoy calling myself the... Even though it's probably not true, I call myself the only DM to uh, go 50 sessions without knowing that you could use strength for dexterity weapons. Uh, or sorry, finesse weapons. Um, 
yeah, I did not know that you could use strength for finesse weapons. I was just like, oh yeah, no, they're dexterity weapons, so you use, uh, or they're finesse weapons, so you, they use dexterity. And I was, I was just wrong. I was, I was a fool. I, I did not know any of what I was talking about. And I think, honestly, that made it a lot, even more fun, because, like, since I didn't know what I was doing, the party couldn't really meta game and know what to expect because I didn't know what to expect or what was going to happen, and neither did they. And yeah, that 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 made it a ton of fun. But yeah. Oh, I just realized that my background music stopped because it had to switch over to a new uh, new video. Anyways, it's, uh, yeah. I, I, I could talk about D&D for a while, and I know it's not for everyone. It's very, uh, still seen as very nerdy, though. It has gotten a little bit more of a positive reputation in recent, uh, in, in recent times. Especially with something like uh, Stranger Things, uh, taking things and just really, you know, running with and borrowing from D and D uh, for for abilities and monsters and everything like that, and it's it's very fun. Uh, and man, I'd love to talk about my current uh, D and D campaign that I'm running, but. I don't want to run the risk of my players watching because I have shared and then getting spoiled on every single thing that's to come. But man, I just, I've done, done a lot of things. Um, to be fair, I could just ask them not to watch for the specific, uh, for this specific video because I do mention it. You know what? I'm gonna do that. Um, I'm gonna just tell them not to, to watch the VOD or anything like that. But, so what's going on is, because I prefer more character-driven stuff, I'm uh, switching things around. I've, uh, I, I'm doing more, I guess, it would fall under political intrigue. And I, I, I've come up with a character and his name is Teobane. Extremely helpful guy. Very nice. You know. He's uh he's the protector of the king uh or not the king, sorry. He's the protector of the princess. Um and because of inactions by the rest of the royal family towards an event known as um uh, well, actually, it's kind of, it has different terms, but pretty much a monster infestation has arrived for the first time ever in this world. And they are like, hey, we need to mobilize everyone. But one kingdom, which is the kingdom that the party's in, is actively going against it and not helping out. So the party's trying to pretty much perform a coup and uh, get the get the princess into power uh over her family and make it so that way because she she's the one who wants to you know help out and actually make sure that uh people are the, that people are fighting in this war because she there there's a belief that you know if everyone unites that we can defeat this uh great evil and you know it's not entirely impossible. Uh, it's going to be... It's not an easy task, to say the least. But it is... Uh, it is something that is possible. And not a lot of people understand kind of how it started or what's going on with it, except for one person, which is Teo Bane. Though he doesn't reveal... he do, No one in the party knows that he knows what is going on, uh, if that makes sense. So... I've, uh, I've set him up as, like, you know, the friendly guy that the party can trust, you know, 
uh, he he's the kind of guy that he'll he'll talk to the party, make sure that they uh, they are you know well equipped, have a place to stay while they're in town, provide as much information as he can, as he's kind of like an information broker, uh, and filling that role of like pretty much a uh, a person that the party can go to for information. And in reality, he has his own plans. See, uh, kind of going back in the lore, there was this character, uh, Tabaxi, known as Wish on the Wind, who uh, one day was, it, it seem, seemingly the individual came into uh, a prophetic, uh, the, the ability to like speak with the gods. Which is something that no one in the history of my setting has ever been able to do. And there's a reason for that. Because despite me, you know, kind of bashing the players over the heads that these gods are, you know, the gods of this setting. And the town that they're in being extremely religious and believing that the gods will save them. Uh, the gods don't exist. They are over... They're just heroes from the past who got... Uh, their lore spread and uh, falsely like kind of messed up in a way where they're perceived to be the gods and people who can actually you know do things but in reality no one actually knows if the gods are real except for uh, Wish on the Wind who found um, an item that pretty much gave him knowledge beyond what he should be able to have and knowledge that he probably didn't want. So initially, you know, he tried to use it for good and tell people, you know, of things to come and see the future, uh, things like that. However, um, after a while, he started to realize that his actions would not lead to anything positive and that kind of humanity needed to... Well, I say humanity. Uh, it, it was more than just humans who are a race in this this world. But like all, all the races and all the peoples of the of the land needed to kind of, in order for them to move forward and become their strongest form and evolve and become greater than they uh, were currently, they needed to, you know, become. Uh, they needed to remove the idea that there were gods so that way they can move forward with the belief that it is all on us to uh, keep ourselves going and that all of our powers and magic and uh, gifts and everything like that it's not it, we created this and we are more than we, we as a people are what um will be needed to you know drive the the world forward that kind of thing in this uh in this setting so uh sorry give me one moment i just have to add a add a little layer here um so So pretty much he, after a while of being like a prophet, kind of developed a status where he had like followers and whatnot and decided to uh, have his followers destroy what he called false works, which was pretty much every work of religious text. So obviously there they're completely blinded by his godlike status and they're like you know of course we'll do anything that you ask us to uh that was kind of the, their vibe and so they did that they destroyed vast amounts of historical items that would have led to the idea that hey the uh the the gods are uh the gods exist and this is how you should follow them so he, he ended up destroying everything, and because he was destroying everything, obviously, the people in charge were like, hey, we don't like this, so uh, we're going to stop you. And they tried. 
and thusly he unleashed a magic that more or less caused a, uh, I don't know what the word is, but pretty much time broke a little bit. And there was about a century or two of time where everything kind of fast forwarded without, uh, like everything kind of existed without anything really changing. So it's like time went through and like the course of two seconds went through two centuries, more or less. So, you know, people died, were born, uh, lived through it, had families, but no one ever changed anything to the landscape, pretty much. It was just... Uh, this, this is what was said to have, like, it, it, it's what happened. And people just believe that those two centuries don't exist because the memories of them are also shrouded by the magic that was used. And the only, there's only, uh, six people that know in this world being, uh, four members of the team of heroes that, uh, actually three members of the team of heroes that survived. Uh, one of them is the son of, uh, or the grandson of one of them. And then there's another, uh, individual who found out, um, making it five. And then Teobain now knows because he gained the same prophetic ability, uh, through finding the eye. So he's number, number six in terms of who knows. And it's like a secret held within, uh, six people that uh, the the world as they know it is not correct, so they're trying to subtly shift it uh, in the in the background now because the fact that they've found out that hey the the gods don't exist and whatnot. But this um, this monster infestation is technically part of that because the only way for people to kind of realize that there is something going on is to have uh it, this was created by tia pain and he's like he used magic in order to bring about a pretty much in imminent apocalypse that could wipe out every single person on this world if they don't come together but he did it for the exact same reason that other people did it to uh or the people before him did it because technically the person before uh there, were, there was one person before wish on the wind and that was the person that the mighty heroes fought together uh and he pretty much caused the exact same thing to happen more or less minus uh the whole you know because of his death they were seen as gods and thusly created the the issue in the first place so pretty much the the party's going up against a guy who knows everything and knows uh, I say knows everything. He he can foresee the future. And he takes actions that make no sense to other people because they're like why would you do this to like for example uh the the princess technically a uh, little little fact is his daughter. Um he has you know he he's his his daughter is it's a technically half daughter it was from an affair with the uh the queen and um he's going to end up killing his daughter because he for he knows in the future in uh in in the world uh that she'll be she'll die of a horrific disease pretty much and that uh he's going to pretty much sacrifice himself more or less by blaming it on the party because obviously you gotta get the the party invested somehow um and in this case i'm making them pretty much because of what uh, Tia Bain does, he'll pretty much mark them as enemies of the kingdom and they will hate him for it because they do not see um, what he sees. 
and he, he pretty much he, he ruined each of their lives to some extent uh, for example, he kidnapped one of the kids uh, that belongs to one of the party members and is pretty much their entire reason that they're there is to find their kid and he took them knowing that she would come looking for her daughter or looking for her son, sorry. Um, because he needs her strength uh, and her rare genetics to be one of the, the few people that can make change and he's going to do he's going to do multiple things to really uh it's going to come to light that a lot of the the party's issues throughout their lives uh were caused by by him uh at least recent issues i should clarify he's not been around since like you know their their birth being you know throwing away like their their favorite toy to make them all all sad no he's you know, he's done things like killing uh, a mentor and general in an army for uh, one of the the party members and things like that. But, yeah, it's... I, I pretty much am setting him up to be um, the... I, I'm setting him up as the secret big bad. Um... Because currently the party believes that a completely different person is just absolutely evil. Which, I mean, technically he is. He's he's a manipulator. He, he does things for his own enjoyment. And he just kind of toys with people's lives for his own amusement. But in reality, he's not actually the evil person that the party's trying to take down. He's actually, realistically, he'd be more of an ally... Um, if they accepted him, but obviously when you've got a guy who is very outwardly evil, the, uh, the party's not going to trust him. And I kind of, I kind of set it up that way on purpose to be like a red herring, you know, he'd be an amazing ally though, because he's a person who through magic has broken his fate, I guess you could say. So he's one person that, uh, you know, my actual big bad cannot predict because he, he's broken free from what is uh, possible to be. And I, I'm, I'm excited to see how he turns out because if the party end up uh, kind of working with him, I guess you could say, to, to some extent, um, he will become probably their most uh, valuable ally. But they have to overlook the fact that he is just an awful human being. Uh, and in this case, he's actually... Well, no, he's a half-elf. But he, he has his... Uh, he's technically son of the king. Uh, but he's, you know, bastard child and all that. Uh, it, it's... A very intricate and complex story that I'm I'm telling and it it's a lot of it's gonna play out uh, hopefully well though I could if it goes wrong I wouldn't I, I understand that like not everything's gonna go perfectly nothing ever does when you're doing uh, D&D but you know currently they kind of there's only one character that I guess doesn't, I say doesn't trust uh, Tia Bane, but it's more like they don't really care about him yet, and once things happen, they might. Uh, but yeah, they, you know, uh, it's, that's all part of telling a, an interesting story. And yeah, uh, with that, let me hide the tabletop and remove it that's actually that is actually looking really nice i really like how that's turned out and you know let me let me uh let me save this real quick let me save as oh there we go uh Cool. Yeah, I, 
like how this this looks. It, it looks really nice. And yeah. Uh, there we go. Okay. Cool. Looking good. Now let me go over to my lounge. Uh, oh yeah, I don't have the the picture anymore. I moved that. Uh, do, do, do. So let me create a little uh, additional source here, additional image. Uh, cool, cool. But yeah, I, I like telling intricate stories through uh, through D and D. See, and that, that fits perfectly, more or less. Now I have all of the uh, parries that do or do not exist. And I have the, the little table for him to be behind. And he'll, you know, he's got his, he's got his little uh, ink thing, the, that, uh, let me... Yeah, that's on the right side. Uh, cool, cool. Exciting stuff. And now I will just have the background to work on for that. Um, and moving along smoothly, which I love. Uh, so let me get the background layout, like the general shape again. Uh, layout. Outline and let's do that in bright green again. Let me clear out all those colors. Don't want to accidentally use something that I shouldn't. And let's get this up and going, shall we? There we go. I like the, the general shape of this. Probably not going to add the skulls or the flag um, or the mast in that specific location. But I do like these little curl things. Oh, I need to upscale that by about 10. I recently finished catching up to One Piece uh, because uh, it was a lot easier than watching through all of Naruto because uh, unlike with Naruto, I learned that hey, you can uh, you can skip filler. Uh, so I watched I watched all of Naruto and including the filler and I definitely did not need the filler and it would have been a lot faster uh, had I not watched all the filler but uh, you live and you learn you know all that all that jazz in this case though I definitely uh, it's definitely made things a lot easier especially I, I watched the dub uh, mostly because I, uh, as I mentioned kind of yesterday, I have issues with like, actually, did I mention attention-based issues? I, I do have attention-based issues. Um, I can, 
uh, I need multiple things going, which is why I'm so good at like talking and drawing and uh, listening to this background music. Well, currently it's paused, but there we go, it's back. Um, you know, I, I, I need to have multiple things going or I kind of lose, uh, lose interest. So usually I would have episodes of One Piece going on in the background as like, I, uh, as I was doing just other things in general in my day-to-day -day life. And that, that was the, the simplest way I found. Uh, to watch it and get through it at like I guess a blistering pace because it only took me a couple months to do and uh, you know that was uh, it only really started hitting slowly once I reached Wano because uh, that was like pretty much right to where it was um, right to where it was like no longer in uh, and where it was no longer uh, dubbed and where it became sub only and I had to really focus in and watch if I wanted to understand any of what was going on but you know I, I really enjoyed it it was a uh, it was a good experience I, I've been keeping up with it mostly because I'm looking forward to you know gear 5 uh, obviously and Oh. Okay. No, that there we go. That that works. Um, but yeah, you know, I'm looking forward to like Gear Five, and that's the majority of the reason that I'm still uh, continuing with it. And uh, yeah, it's oh, there's actually probably another. That's uneven. I gotta gotta fix that now. Um. Let me fix that. Um, but yeah, you know, I, I I enjoyed One Piece for what it was. I, you know, it it's enjoyable. Uh, I can understand why people say like, you know, why some people see it as very daunting to get into. Um, it's not, I guess it doesn't crack like my top, uh, favorite anime, um, like it, it, I could see it definitely being top 10 for me, but I don't know if it's higher than that because I've, I've very niche, like enjoyments. I, I've, I, I treat it like any other medium, which I really shouldn't. Uh, cause that, that changes up, you know, how things work with it so much. Cause if you treat it like, you know, you're going to watch any other, uh, TV series, then you're going to miss out on like just the enjoyment factor of it. But, um, for me, it just, I have that inherent like thought process that everything is, uh, I treat everything very similarly. And I really shouldn't. Okay, so let me just get this drained out. Um, oh, wait. On eraser mode. So that right there. Two right there. I should set this to eraser mode and get that to be right there. Okay, cool. Um, but yeah, like for me, I I think I definitely lost like a bit of. I don't treat, I didn't grow up watching anime. Uh, it's something that I only started in high school. Um, and I think the, the first series I ever fully completed that was like 
one of a long form series i should clarify um because like you know i i watched things like i'm trying to remember what i watched back then the only one that sticks out is like one that i watched very early on and real <laughs> it nearly put me off of um anime entirely was uh high school of the dead which is ironic because a lot of people watch that and be like you know what i think there's something good to see here uh because of all the you know obvious fan service but i was like i was looking for i guess the walking dead and i came across uh very much not that because uh, i was big into the the walking dead back uh in high school and even now i watched all the way up until the the finale i rewatched it a few times actually and um anyways I, I yeah i i watched that it nearly put me off of anime entirely which probably would have been bad because i would have missed out on so many good things that anime has to offer that aren't uh gratuitous fan service but anyways yeah um yeah the first long form series i um i initially watched all the way up until it uh, it had stopped and then read through the manga until the the ending, or at least I believe I did, um, was Fairy Tale. Which, it's funny that I say I disliked, you know, gratuitous fan service and then talk about having watched Fairy Tale all the way through. Uh, but, you know, I just, I found the world very interesting. I, I was in it more for the actual uh fighting and action and less for you know the uh fan service which uh, i mean you know if you're if you're into anime for fan service totally fine there's nothing wrong with that i mean it's there for a reason so obviously you saying that you like it is not inherently wrong Um, it's just not really my thing. And then, you know, one, two, three. Uh, I think I want to leave that as is. Just two prongs. And then maybe I'll do the mast in the middle. Um, yeah, that, that seems like a, a good little idea. Okay, but yeah, you know, I I don't watch anime for fan service is what I'm pretty much trying to say. Even though, if if a show I really like does have it, I'm not going to stop watching the show just because it exists. You know, it's just something that I more or less tune out. Um, but yeah, there are, like I I have a list of like all the all the stuff that I watched and. Uh, yeah. Okay, so let's get... What should I add? Maybe I should move... I'll move the mast over for the sake of, like, getting... It's, uh... That... Ooh, that's not right. Um... Let's go mast. But yeah, uh, yeah I've watched watched a ton of anime. Um, I've enjoyed a, a ton of anime as well. There's sometimes certain things. It also depends upon the mood of the day as well because I, I definitely enjoy certain anime more at certain times. Uh... Yeah, I'm trying to think of what my, like, I guess because I've, oh man, because I've only watched One Piece recently as like the most recent thing. Well, actually, no, I watched Blue Lock and Blue Lock has been amazing. As a, a sports guy, I really enjoyed it 
for just, you know, it just, it's, it, it's some, for some it's oh, way over the top, but for me, I, I don't mind it. It, it feels exactly like something I, I enjoy. It's very, even though it's like a bit like excessive and over the top at times, um, I really like the, uh, how each of the characters are kind of, kind of done. I, I've recently, I, I stopped, uh, since the series has ended, I started watching, uh, or start, I started reading the, uh, the, the manga, and I feel like the manga does a lot of stuff better, but I also really like, um, at the same time, I really like, you know, things that are animated and flashy and can keep my attention for, um, for a time without having to, to worry about anything, but yeah, that, that's just me, though. Um, yeah, okay, so that looks, that looks good. Cool. Uh, yeah, but yeah, Blue Lock is probably my favorite that I've watched recently. Um, I don't know what I'm excited for. I guess I'm excited to see the ending of, uh of Attack on Titan. Honestly, it probably, there is a 100% chance that, you know, the final part's already been out for a while and I'm just forgetting. And I've been so wrapped up in things that I've forgotten to watch it. And honestly, that's probably 100% correct. I'm just, you know, I'm just dumb. But for me, it hasn't come out yet. I'm going to rewatch the entire series again before I watch the finale. Um... Between that and uh, oh, I've really liked Record of Ragnarok. Uh, not the. I mean, I really liked the. Uh, I I really liked the the manga, but I also I loved the. Uh, I loved watching Jack the Ripper versus uh, Hercules. That was. Man, that was my favorite. That was that was my favorite. Uh, fight so far I even with all the ones that have come after it 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 just sticks out in my mind and I I just enjoy it uh, so if you only ever watch one of the fights I enjoy watching that one the, the psychology of it and the you know, just the whole vibe is amazing, in my opinion. But, yeah. It, it, it's funny. Um, one of the, one of the things I started playing, uh, because I started playing Perino, uh, you know, in the campaign. Though actually, Perry knows an alias, I should clarify, for the, in the campaign. Uh, his real name, I say his real name. His real name that he has created for himself is Kiplin Ray. Um, uh, Lord Kiplin Ray, if you want to be fancy and use his full title, because technically he owns a very small portion of land, which makes him a lord. Uh, and, you know, he, he did that purely for for the title and for just to just to piss people off by being you know some poor uh scraggly looking pirate who is actually a very legitimate lord and deserves to be you know treated with some respect um that, I, I love that that little thing about him that he he holds a singular title purely for the purpose of um uh, holding himself on the same tier as nobles um but yeah like you know i i created him before watching one piece because obviously i created him like 
four years ago, and I only started watching One Piece at the beginning of the year, uh, this year. So, you know, it was, it was fun, uh, realizing that he has a, he has a very similar, uh, he, he does bear some similarities to a character that I've never watched anything for in Luffy, especially in regards to his, like, his want for freedom and for, uh, he has a desire for, like, you know, being free and getting to live the life that he wants. Because in his character, um, he he does not know who his parents are. His his birth parents, specifically. Uh, I made that a, a thing. That pretty much, he, he grew up on the street. He, he lives, he lived a rough life that most people uh, would not be able to handle and he he did it with you know i don't want to say with a smile but like he did it because he wanted to be the one to survive he desired to he wanted to live more than the other people around him in his own mind um so that that's kind of who he is as a person he uh everything he does is an attempt to keep himself alive to allow himself to you know complete the goals that will keep him that will will have him feeling like he lived a fulfilled life so you know he he his he he did he did things that would that most people would never think to do to survive from like eating uh, rats and maybe even a small dog. I haven't confirmed if that's a thing. Um, you know, but like eating bottom of the barrel things that even like some animals would not touch and stealing and willing to take, you know, beatings and, uh, cuts just to, just to get that little bit further and fighting off uh, fighting people bigger than him, uh, to protect what little he has. He's, he's always kind of seen himself as, like, an underdog person, and also, he doesn't know how old he is. He's not educated. He's, he, he, per he feigns education and status to kind of appear better to those around him, because that's what he perceives as, like, what people want, and what people trust is nobles and rich people, which is not true. But, you know, he he, he learned how to feign uh, that kind of personality. Anyways, and more or less that all changed once he accidentally stole from the wrong person. He stole from a captain of a ship, uh, thinking he was just another merchant that was easy pickings and instead found himself uh having you know pissed off a proper uh pirate captain in uh the the man who would become his father figure um but you know he after like he he then kind of i guess grew and found grew to find a family of his own um in this crew and uh he spent 15 years with them only to to break a singular rule there there's one rule on the on the crew that everyone follows uh which uh wait did i you know i Uh, sorry, give me one moment. I'm just uh, trying to make sure that this is looking as even as possible. Um, okay. Um, yeah, he, he he broke one rule, which is you don't uh, you don't mess with the anything the captain owns. 
and um, in this case, he had fallen in love with one of the captain's many wives, which I kind of borrowed from Negan uh, from The Walking Dead. I kind of took inspiration as like this leader who is charming enough to really make people fall for his, uh, to make people believe in him. Um, so that's, that's how I kind of had the character be, uh, be written, right? Uh, to be kind of like that. And because of that, um, and my character, you know, falling in love with, um, a woman that belonged to the, I, I say belong, she, it, again, Perry's like very, um, everything it should be free, uh, that, that mindset, um, so he doesn't really trust, he, he doesn't fully believe in it, he, he kind of stays away from, uh, things that aren't his, just for, because he's like, oh, I don't want to cause problems like that when it comes to, like, individual belongings, but that's beside the point. Um, in, in this case, you know, he, he fell for someone who was technically taken, and he had a small part in, you know, that person being uh, forced into becoming a, a member of the crew. And, you know, it was a very, a very wholesome thing. He, uh, he, he pretty much, she was the first person to kind of be like a mother figure to him. Uh, and he really liked that and kind of like see him for, you know, the nice guy that he, the, the nicer person that he is compared to the rest of these, uh, pirates. So... He, he kind of developed feelings, and then uh, those feelings were found out. Um, and yeah, that uh, that obviously caused problems because you know don't go against the captain. That's that's rule number one, and rule number two is don't go against the captain. Um, but yeah, sorry. Give me one moment. I gotta close up my window. Okay, it's now much quieter, and I've accidentally... Okay, there we go. Fix that now. Um, yeah, but anyways, uh, so he ran away, obviously, uh, not wanting to, to face the consequences for his actions. He's, um, he, he's not very good about facing consequences. Um, but the one thing that I kind of left up to the DM's uh, discretion for, for this character's backstory is uh, if the captain is truly like, wh what what drives the captain? Because I left it very ambiguous if uh, the captain would be unhappy with uh, Perry for what he did because you know, I made it seem like, it made it so that way, like, if the DM wanted to be like, uh, the captain sees Perino as his, uh, almost like a surrogate son, in that case, he wouldn't be nearly as mad as if he saw him as more, maybe a protege and saw it as like a betrayal of a master and his student type, uh, type deal. And I, my character doesn't know that in character. Um, I don't know that out of character what's going to happen. 
but it, it's going to lead to an interesting confrontation later on down the line when my assuming my character survives um even if he doesn't uh i have contingency plans in place for that but you know this is something that's like he, he's finally doing an unselfish act for the first time because his entire goal now is to free uh the woman who's uh the the wife of the the captain because she, she's obviously in in the the thing she's not happy um so his goal is to you know be uh is is to save her and be like unselfish for the first time but i don't know if that's something that will actually end up happening i'll have to you know see how the the story plays out and things like uh things like that um but yeah okay so let me get this done yeah someone seemed to have been i think chainsawing something outside which was not very cool of them to do on the day that I'm streaming. Though then again, I guess it's the daytime. I shouldn't be complaining. Most of my streams take place during the evening. Uh, on the rest of the days, they're always like seven to to, to seven to uh, to ten p.m. or sometimes eleven. Uh, it, it depends upon you know how things uh, how things are that day. But anyways. Um, yeah, let me just uh, create another layer. I see one. Um, but yeah, uh, I'm excited to see where it goes and where the DM takes it. And I really hope that uh, it, it goes well. Almost forgot the key thing, which is you can do this to make it go all straight lines exactly where you need to be. Nice, 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 nice. There we go. That's a nice looking uh, flooring bit right there. It's gonna be a lot of uh, wooden, wooden designs and uh, stuff like that. But yeah, I'm. Uh, uh, this this is my first like actual, uh, I guess, art uh, thing that I've ever used. So I'll have to you know f figure out things as I go along. Um, and yeah, let me get, let me hide all that and do, ooh, that was a nice rumble of, uh, thunder in the background music. Um, but yeah, you know, it's, uh. I, I, I'm, uh, I'm happy with how well I've been able to use this, and I'd highly recommend uh, Krita, Krita, I don't know how, it's, uh, K R I T A. It's a very good site for, uh, for especially for novice artists. Um, it's also probably just as good for people who know what they're doing, unlike myself.
show that I do have to get back into now that I'm thinking about it. Uh, I'm, I have to resume watching Vizmoon Saga. I really liked uh, season one. And I know that season two has come out already. I just haven't gotten around to watching it yet. Um, well. Um, but, yeah, it's, uh, it, it's, I gotta, I gotta get around, back around to watching it, um, because it's, it's been a lot of fun so far, and I really, uh, I really enjoyed it. Uh, another show that I've watched uh, recently as well is uh, Vikings. I've gotten, I, I got in, it, it feels, you know, Vikings that uh, both of them are I, similar. Uh, not exactly, but, you know, in the uh, the theme. And I, I recently, I got, got into watching uh, the show Vikings, and then I think after I finish off, um, I think I'm on season three. Uh, I, ju I just finished off um, with the beginning of... Uh, I just finished off, like, uh, the whole bit with France. Um, and, and that whole thing. Um, so I'm kind of curious to see, you know, what happens next. And... Yeah, get to get to see what happens to all the the characters and whatnot, which is hopefully gonna be real cool. And ooh, that that looks real smooth and clean. Nice, nice, nice. Cool. Um so let me now do a darker color again. Except this time for uh, this portion but yeah I, I'm looking looking forward to that when I have the time I will definitely try and uh, watch it but uh, between all, all that I have to do like uh, here at, at home um, as I jokingly said yesterday uh, training for the beginning of my male wife training arc uh, it's yeah it's it's been busy and i've not had um nearly as much time to you know have fun and do things like that this is pretty much me getting to have uh getting to have fun so yeah you see me get to get to mess around and do this is my uh my leisure time and my downtime where i'm not doing uh everything and yeah it's uh it, it's a lot of it, it's very enjoyable So let me drop this down a length. There we go. Cool. I don't think I should have too much more wood based uh, things to, to do after this. But now I can just. Cut it too close. Don't wanna, don't wanna 
color to store the color underneath. Like that. Yeah, I've, I've had to cut down on uh, D and D though. Is one thing that I'm kind of disappointed by. Uh, I used to be part of two other games that took place uh, that would have taken place during my Friday and my Monday uh, stream time, but neither of them. I mean, both of them are, you know, run by great people, and I enjoyed both, but not really my my vibe after a while and by a while I just mean like a couple sessions uh, it was very interesting in premise but not really what I was looking for in execution um, yeah that's the best way to put it uh, okay cool so now I've got all of that done I got my layout layer and Actually, I kind of want to put this over the wall color, if that makes sense. So let me uh, add, actually, okay, wait, no, I got an idea, I got an idea. Um, okay, so I'm gonna duplicate this. Um, rail. And then try not to get railed um, by this thing messing up. Okay, so let me go to my uh, thing here. Zoom in. Um, I surprisingly, I got a, I got a quite a lot of praise. Uh, for, for my art yesterday from a non-art friend. They were like, yeah, it's, you know, for a non-artist, very good. Uh, and made me feel very proud. Uh, they, they did make comments about, obviously, the, the very simplified background, but that, that's kind of what I was going for. I wanted to be uh, very, I guess I wanted to put it as childish and inviting because, you know, no one looks at a piece of kind of, I guess, childish uh, art and goes, this right here, uh, absolutely terrible. Uh, kid who made this needs to, you know, quit art. It's treated with, you know, a, oh, this looks, you know, very sweet. Um, and that's what I was going for. Not, not, I don't want it to be taken, you know, seriously as serious art. That's, so I, uh, I did my best to make it a way where it's not taken seriously without like, you know, just blatantly putting, uh, I, I just try to try to make it like both. Uh, something where it would not be taken seriously and where you know uh, no artist would be offended for seeing it and they just you know it could be something that's like personality for me it, it's unique to to my uh, to my brand I guess you could say and I, I want my brand to just be very light hearted very uh, soothing and I feel like the the more childish uh, art is a perfect example of that so I'm happy with it I was told it had very point-and-click adventure vibes the uh, at, at points and I was like as someone who never really played point-and-click adventures I wouldn't know, but you know, I, I'll take that as a compliment. Um, Cause yeah, I mean, 
it, I think it was intended as a compliment, so I'll take it as one, but had they, you know, told me that it was absolutely terrible and that they hated it and that uh, I was di a disgrace to anyone who ever picked up uh, an artist utensil, uh, you know, part of me would assume that they were joking because uh, the person I talked to uh, does kind of enjoy the they they like to keep up the persona that they are like you know rough and tumble uh type uh person but in reality are like really uh nice person in general you know but uh yeah had they i i would have just assumed that they also were just you know yanking my chain more or less um yeah, that, that looks good though. I do like how that looks. Uh, I just need a little bit of, again, darker detail. And in this case, I'm gonna go with something slightly different. Um, okay, so where was that? Oh, right, I gotta. I gotta uh, do a thing. Right, right, right. Um, put it here. And. Oh, wait, no, I have to. I have to duplicate it. Yeah, I will. Uh, okay, cool. Duplicate. No, not wrong layer, I duplicated. Um, now I just need to go to here. That would have been very cool if you could. Um, now I wonder. No, that that's just straight up black. It's not a thing. Okay. No worries, no worries. Um, okay, cool. I do want to draw this back in. Let's 
so that way just in case I go over the If I don't, then well, actually no, because I won't have to worry about if I go and accidentally. Yeah, don't have to worry about messing up. of things I'll be able to finish off maybe just this on stream today and I might do other parts off uh, I'll do the last little bit off stream kind of like how I did yesterday with uh, the the lettering on the, the banner for example Because yeah, I did that. I did that after the fact, and uh, it came across uh, a lot nicer after I was able to, you know, fix it up in uh, fix that post stream. Oh, that that looks rough. Uh, Almost have 50 followers over on Twitch, which is insane. Because I'm like following 50 streamers that I've watched clips of. Um, and, you know, it's like either I need to start following more people or I need to start making better content, you know, because. These people are here uh, looking for for something, obviously, and I, I don't know what I have to offer beyond uh, hopefully a, a soothing-ish voice and um, self-deprecating humor. I mean, to be fair, most of them, from what I can tell, are just our fellow uh, smaller VTubers, and they're you know following and supporting a uh, fellow fellow creator. But you know, they're all like way more professional than I am, from what I can tell. I haven't had the chance to you know go through every single one of theirs, their uh, theirs, uh, their like pages and see what they what they have going on and watch their highlights or anything but like they they're uh they, they've got me beaten in a lot of uh a lot of areas for quality of their their content yeah um actually you know i'm gonna remove this layer I'm going to duplicate this now so it's even. Um, but yeah, it's just like I, I feel amazed that I, I 
personally, I'd like to be of the belief that they are just, you know, following a person that also happens to have VTuber in their name and, uh, don't think of me as anything special. Oh, thank you, Hell Sniper. For the advice. Oh. Cool. Uh, thank you. I'll. Uh, I'll add those after stream since it's uh, getting close to when I have to end. Uh, even now, but. I guess this means that tomorrow is also going to be a bit of an art stream. Also, wait, what are you doing up? It's like four in the morning for you, isn't it? Shouldn't you be like, you know, be asleep? I don't know. I'm bad at time. I think it's 12 hours. It might be less, might be more, but like. I see. Well, um, have fun with D&D. &D. Uh, hopefully your session goes well. And, yeah. Thanks, you know, for, for, oh. <laughs> well, at least thank you for, for stopping in and showing any amount of care for, for me as a, as a person. Uh, I can tell you, you truly are a, uh, a, a wonderful, wonderful guy. Uh, you know, and now all these people know that you're a wonderful guy. So the, yeah. You, you've ruined, you ruined your self-image of... <laughs> you, you've ruined your self-image. But... I'll allow it. Uh, sadly, VOD automatically... Uh, <laughs> automatically, I'll... Uh, gets published to to YouTube, so that's that's beyond my control. I set it up that way. Uh, so your it, it the VOD will eventually delete itself, but the the art stream will never never die, never disappear. Um, cool. Let me add textures. Uh, no one, no one. Will, I've got like one view on uh, across all my five streams, or no, I'm on my fourth stream. What am I saying? I've only got I've got one view across four streams, and I'm 95% sure it's accidentally myself. So uh, no one's gonna ever care about these. Don't worry. I, I won't I won't share it with the the rest of the group though. I, I'll I'll you know keep up your image there at least. Uh, what was I doing again? Uh, oh yes, I was going for stamp because it was cool. Um, now going for darker. I assume that you arrived recently, so you missed the uh, the part earlier where I was talking about uh, a, a a very cool friend, a uh, uh, artist friend of mine, who who was giving me uh, input and advice. Um, so yeah, don't go looking for that either. I I totally didn't talk uh, 
talk nicely about you there either. But <laughs> hey, I didn't name you in particular, but now they, based upon the way I've been talking, they'd kind of figure it out. Uh, you know what? Just just to be nice, you're the second nicest Australian I know, and I only know two of you, so. But, uh, you know, I, I like how the, uh, how, how this part is, uh, is coming along for, for me today. And, uh, I like the little bit of texture making things look a little bit more realistic, I guess you could say, even though it's very uniform. I guess technically I could add some more, like, splotches throughout make it look a little bit less uniform. Yeah, that looks a little bit better. Exterior looking. Looking nice. But, uh, yeah. Take a drink. Gotta remember to stay hydrated throughout this. I don't nearly do as much talking um, when I'm playing games normally, so sometimes I just, I'll forget to drink for hours on, on end without really even realizing that I've I, I that I've just completely uh completely forgotten but yeah uh, oh wow that's extremely dark uh but yeah no it's it, it's nice to to get the chance to do something so relaxing. I, I have a metal water bottle, so I don't have to worry about, uh, worry about, you know, having empty water bottles around me. I prefer to, you know, just reuse what I have, uh, refill it like a normal person. Well, actually, I don't even know if it's normal to have refillable. It's probably like 50-50 in reality, but in a better attempt to make myself seem normal and not um, uh, crazy as a person, I'll say that it is normal to, to not use multiple water bottles. Um, okay, let me, that is disgustingly bright. what oh wait I have art that I have next to me that I was going to borrow colors from anyways why am I not borrowing from that like I initially planned to and watch So, pick aqua that's close to the blue in the wheel. So, right about there, then pick a little closer to the, near the white and gray. See how this, that actually looks really nice. 
thank you. Uh, I mean, again, professional artist compared to non-artist. Actually, yeah, that works a lot better for the, the color. Very mellow, doesn't draw too much attention away from everything. Thank you. Now to absolutely butcher this with uh, my very childish clouds and sun. Because I desire simplicity. <laughs> destroy all the all the work by making it extremely childish let's go uh so for me let's go here bring it down to here to start off with ah true uh, i need brighter yellow to start but i don't mind it going There we go. I'll see if, how that works for me. Um, and place this. No, that's too much sun. And also on the wrong, wrong uh, thing. Yeah, that looks nice me because the plan is to uh, do kind of what I did actually uh, since you just arrived I'll show you uh, one of the things I finished a little bit earlier uh, this nice little desk uh, that I made it's got a add a little like globe um, ink quill with a feather in it added the the logo up front just for you know keeping it up front uh some candles making it look all all nice and nice and stuff but yeah that that's uh that, that was uh, what i spent the the first part doing and now back to, to this, add in a few sun rays and yeah, um, two gloves. like it's gonna be a three-part art stream though which honestly don't mind at all uh, now make it slightly more on the orange side um, I absolutely love how that looks in the, in the little preview menu brother is going out to a soccer game tonight kind of jealous and not one of his usual soccer games where he's playing it's like the ones where he's watching like you know professionals play you gotta go traveling to see uh, TFC play whoever they're playing tonight it's funny they're like technically one of my favorite teams just because proximity um, and whatnot also because they have uh, actually I don't even know if they have the player that I'm thinking of anymore but you know uh, yeah he's he's going there and Doing, doing that, and getting it to go see the game. Then again, I don't really 
I don't, I'm not a, I guess, the biggest fan of, like, watching. I, I can't really sit through an entire sports thing. Never could. Really ruined um, All-Star Game 2016, uh, whatever year it was in Toronto. Got to go see that with the family. And in my opinion, you know, I was disappointed through the greatest dunk contest of the past like decade and then some and I just was like I was disappointed because I was not really I, I just it wasn't a week that I was enjoying which kind of sucked and ruined the entire uh, entire vibe could have could have been so much better if I'd actually spent the time and allowed myself to enjoy it but I didn't like a fool. But uh, at least I do have some memories of it. You know. Got to meet Steve Nash very briefly. Uh, fellow Canadian. Though technically he was born in... Uh, oh, is it South Africa? I, yeah, I believe so. It was South Africa. Um, you know, and I got to meet... Adam Silver uh, shook his hand once and then uh, got to see Kobe play his last All-Star game uh, which was you know I, I believe 2016 was his last All-Star game at least I, I really hope it is and I'm not just making up statistics like a <laughs> Like, I possibly... I, I probably am actually making up things, and I'm just forgetting what the actual... No, actually, it makes sense for 2016 to be his last year, because LeBron joined not long after he, he retired. And then... Yeah, because in 2019, the Raptors won the playoffs. And I was... Uh, I wasn't there. I, I was actually watching the game when Kawhi hit that... Uh, hit the shot against the Philadelphia 76ers to uh, send us uh, through to the to our to our next round and it was just you know that was that was crazy uh, crazy fun when I was I, I was just amazed that was like some something you, you can't write it just you have to you have to experience it and yeah, it was just a lot of a lot of uh, a lot of fun to to be there and see that. Um, or not to be there, but sorry to see that live um, on TV when it was happening, and not just watch the highlight the next day. Uh, it was crazy. Usually, I don't like watching basketball because. Um, Whenever I do, we tend to lose. Uh, we being Toronto, because Toronto's, you know, again, nearest uh, team to me and whatnot. But it's just like, man, not being able to watch just because you you have a you're, you're a jinx to the team. It's uh, it's a shame. But yeah. Personally, part of me doesn't... Well, actually, no. The mast... The mast makes sense. If I add the mast and maybe have it draped down to here, I can put the alert box in it and then have something else over here, like some boxes or something, be where chat goes. Uh, that might be might be a good idea. But um, yeah, that that's uh, that's next step. Um, so let's see, cause I'm gonna want, uh, cause I'm gonna want to what's it called? Going. Uh, Oh, I'm gonna wanna wrap things up soon, since um, 
it is getting uh, pretty close to the time where I need to start getting stuff ready for uh, my session. Uh, you know what? I'm gonna do I'm gonna do a coin flip. Bring, bring this over. Um, so, if it lands uh, tails, I will go uh, another 30 minutes, and if it lands uh, heads, I will end stream uh, right now. So, let's see what we get. Tails, okay, we're going another 30 minutes. I feel like I should be able to get the mast done in that time. Uh, do mast outline. Because a lot of straight lines in this one, thankfully. Um, okay, let's get it down to here. here because yeah I can it realistically it shouldn't take me too long but I also have to like do things like eat like I, I eat a little bit before stream but like I'll get myself a little little snack before I oh, go about doing some more uh, b before I go about my D&D &D session because, you know, I want to be fully, fully refreshed and everything like that. Um, should, should probably bring this down a little bit more. Okay, cool, cool. There we go. That's the outline, which means that I don't need this extra outline. Right? I don't have. Oh, yeah. Okay, that's that. Sun two. Clouds two. There we go. Yeah, that that looks that looks good. Um, okay. And all color. But yeah, like I I should have uh, enough time to to do everything with like an hour and a half. You know, bring in bring in today's laundry, get it all. Uh, Put in the put in the dryer for a quick five ten minutes. Let it get rid of any bugs that may have gotten attached. Uh, stuff like that. And so the base is going to be a lighter color. So I'm going to go with that right there and do a quick fill for now these two. Yeah, that looks fine. And yeah, just focus on making sure everything is ready for today. And since since my sessions usually end around 9 30, 10 o'clock, I'll be able to have enough time to prepare stuff for tomorrow. Uh, tomorrow's session. It's gonna be gonna be fun, hopefully. Uh, party is fighting a assassin in a group of people but this assassin has the ability to change what they appear like so they're going to be like it think of it like you know a kind of who done it or a locked room it uh not locked room but like trying to figure out who did it amongst 
uh, all the suspects being inside and that suspect being able to 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 you know make themselves appear differently uh, it should should be a lot of fun um, and I'm looking you know looking forward to it smaller because I'm going to have it be going uh, that's too small yeah eight should be perfect I'm going to have it go two separate directions that makes sense okay and now go back to like scenario oh nice I like that little thing that it has created there but yeah uh, it doesn't look perfect but you know looks adequate that's the the one rule of my thing. It's gotta look. You don't have to look perfect, you just gotta look good enough. There we go. Nah, too much. Don't wanna do too much. That's the last thing anyways um okay now let's go back over to this here and get us a more silvery color plain keep it simple so now I just need a little what do I need I think a little bar coming across from here make it so that way it's um, Yeah, make it so that way I can like add um, a little flag hanging off of it or something like that to uh, to make it so that way it can have a uh, a notification from the alert box pop up on there for anybody who like you know follows or uh, anything like that. So uh, let's go with. And huh. I have an idea. Okay, um, need to do crates. Actually, no, don't need that layer. 
um, crates and then a layer after that called uh, chalkboard. I've done uh, done good. So, the idea I've come up with is to have a chalkboard like thing leaning up against a few crates, something like what they have over here. So, I'm going to actually bring this thing over, um, do a side. Nope, that, that was a tilt. Increase the size of these. So that way they are just, you know, sitting here. Oh, that might be a bit big. There we go. I, I like that. That right there looks fine size wise but actually I need it to be over more okay cool so I'm just going to quickly uh, for these crates just jot down their basic positioning using um, a line Because if there's something that I need to mess around with later, I'll at least like know where these things are supposed to be exactly. Okay, and now if I just double check that I did that right. Yeah, that looks more or less correct uh, for general positioning. And then I will need a chalkboard, which uh, let's go with, uh, let me go to Google really quick and pull up a reference image for a one of those uh, standing chalkboards that go like uh, that, that are like for, you know, um, they, they go like in front of a, a store, for example. There we go, I found one. Um, let me save this. Cool, cool. That's exactly what I'm looking for. Um, yeah, grab that, move it over. References, do, do, do. Um, insert as reference layer. Okay. Now, even without seeing it, put it there. Scale it up to like that big. We'll say, and then show reference image. God, that is terrible uh, to look at. It's actually able to be much bigger than that because of how it's uh, how it is. So I'm gonna have it right there. That'll be where the uh, the chat logs will be going by. And now let me get my line here. Make sure that looks good. Um, oh, you know what I've been doing? Uh, actually, in this case, I'll knock it down, but the other ones will keep the same. Using a 15 instead of a 10 brush.
wonderful. So now if I remove that, remove the crate slayer, yeah, it looks good. Looks like it's in the right spot. Um, let me bring back the reference image, pull it over, uh, increase the saturation, and snag. Uh, let's go with this patch right here where it's not perfectly clean, but it's not dirty either. Um, oh, wait. Duplicate. CC. Okay, now there. Yeah, that looks good. Looks good. Um, add in color around the edges, and then I'll, using one of the, the brushes, I'll... Oh. I need to start letting go, like, not holding it down constantly. Like, I... For me, I have very, I guess, steady at times. I, I can go make things, you know, clean up nicely. But I run the risk of if I do make a mistake, then I end up accidentally having all of it uh, look absolutely uh, terrible. You know what I'm going to do, because I constantly want to, you know, head, keep on reliving my past glories, uh, like I'm some kind of high school jock that has not, uh, that that you know peaked in, peaked in high, you know, just just peaked. Uh, oh wait, need a need to fill it out first before I do anything um, so let me go back to this I'm like I know no one will actually see this but like I see it now while making and I just I want to clear up these single pixels that are ever so slightly the wrong color and have the background showing through because if I don't it's just it's gonna cause me like um, to just want to throw something I don't know I don't throw things actually that, that was a uh, I don't know why I say throw things. That's what like normal people do when they're angry. I'm uh, or upset with something. They they like throw it and that's yeah, that's not me. So I should be able to actually finish off. You know what? I've changed my mind. I'm not gonna stop at 30 minutes. I'm gonna stop once the job's done, which ain't too long from now. So that's okay. Um, cool. Now let me snag. 
this thing, which I was going to use before, and then drop it down to like, yeah, five should work. that didn't make a mistake. Yeah, there we go. That's subtle enough that you can possibly notice it, but you won't be it's not overly, you know, offensive on the, the eyes. And then I'll uh, add an extra layer just to see if I like this. Um, oh wait, no, it'd have to be above. Actually, I just have to find the right texture for it. Yes, I have found it. That looks perfect. And because I'm a person who wipes from kind of left to right on an angle, I'll do it with a slightly deeper on that portion and slightly higher on this. There we go. That looks great. I like that. Cool. So that's where, where chat messages are going to be uh, in the future. You know, um, for when I want to do, I guess, yeah, that, that's where they're going to be. And then, um, should I have a banner is the question. Because, like, I could totally see myself not doing a banner. But, you know, I will. I, I, I will. Grab this color right here. Throw um, duplicate. Oh wait, no. I should probably do the uh, the rest of the the lines first. So out here you go. for these. these in and then they'll be nice and tidy. Um, but yeah, 
and then I can add shadowing and stuff in a, in a bit. I haven't really focused on light sources, I realized, with this exterior scene, which really feels like the exact opposite of what I should be doing. But I will add some in a, in a bit. Uh, I'll go through and add them real quick before I make sure that I do them before I call the stream, call for the end of the stream, because, you know, wouldn't want to forget that. That's something that uh, I, I definitely do need. having, since the light source is over there, having like shadows coming off of it over here is necessary. And with that, duplicate it. Color crates, crats. Uh, Nope, not exactly what I was going for, but eh, close enough. Looks very pink now that I look at it. Or orange, maybe orange is the better color, but it's gonna be behind stuff, so I shouldn't mind too much. Let me get, actually, let me do this color. Yeah, that's more realistic for what I've been doing. scaled uh, like 25 50 yeah let's just do that real quick around these lines get them all done done and dusted This quality is like the stuff to where you're probably doing it as like a as a uh, you know donation stream thing. It's just like have so and so do your art for you for a stream, and then I just roll up with this. I mean, it's not terrible. I it's not great, but it's not terrible. That, that's that's my mindset of this. I it could be worse, could be a lot worse. <laughs> could it be better? A hundred percent. Could it be worse? Definitely. Actually, I probably only need like. Don't even need. What is that? Five. Those. 
those specifically. I'm only doing those. gonna I uh, yes oh f funny thing um it just came to mind uh I was like what what were some things I didn't talk about yesterday because I've been thinking about like you know I, I spent four hours talking I'm gonna run out of stuff to say eventually one of the things I didn't talk about that I was considering talk about was um I I watched uh so I, I watched the the what's it called video the uh, unit seven three one video by uh, Wendigoon. Um, it wasn't the first time that I'd seen the content because I'd actually I'd watched uh, what was the YouTuber's name? I want to say it was like Dear Future Me or Hello Future Me, something like that. Uh, I watched his video on it first, and I, I'd, I'd watched it like a day and a half, I think, at most, before Wendigoon's video came out. I'm like, I was like, man, what are the chances of this timing? But yeah, I, I watch pretty much everything. I, I think I've watched every single video that Wendigoon's put out. Uh, really, really like the guy. Uh, as a YouTuber, Re really my, uh, really my type of uh, YouTuber for for the content that he he does. Uh, I, I really enjoy it. Keeps it very uh, professional. I love. He's one of the few that I rarely normally when I'm watching videos i will skip over um the you know the sponsored ads because i i don't have the money to put towards anything um and i'm not really a mobile game player so you know that's not really something i'm too interested in but you know with him he does it so well that i just can't help but stick around and listen to it just to just to see what the uh what the story of uh of the week is is for that um but yeah you know look at that 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 looks that looks really good you know perfect place for where the uh the the chat can be and uh, yeah. Now I just need the little, uh, hanging banner for, um, that. So let me do... That is way too much detail for that reference. Uh, so let's go with... You know what? Actually, no. I think I can make. I think I can make this one work. Oh, there we go. There we go. Found. Ooh, actually, I like the gold trim on this. Um. So I'm going to save this. Uh, bring it over as a reference image perfect 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 there we go how's this look nice little hanging gesture oh right i can switch gotta remove the aspect ratio for these things because i want to be wider um just so that way it can fit everything 
most likely be doing like practice, um, doing some tests with it. And yeah, uh, getting that all. Getting that all set up. Okay, so nearly out of water, but that's okay. We're almost we're almost done. We're at the end. Uh, this is where you know rise to the occasion uh, and finish this off real quick. So let's do a mm, I God, what am I a uh, banner? Technically, it's banner outline, but that's beside the point. I'm not focused on that at the moment. Let me get this shot back down to a size 10. Oh, wait, let me make this semi transparent now. Um, let's go 50, like my usual number for these things. And. Get it right there. I like I like right there as its position. Um, this is one where ooh, now that I'm looking at it, this might be one where I'd prefer it to be color and then add in the outline via shadowing around the back. So I think I'm going to do that. Yeah, I think I'm gonna do that. So I'm gonna do this is banner back. Um, then above it will be banner red. Cause I'll do the gold as its own separate thing. But actually, you know what? Because I'm me, gonna change it to banner purple banner perp uh, okay let me go throw it on the thing actually wait do I have my no I don't have that reference image there so let me go grab it and pull it over and make it uh, oh right I was going to do that thing um, Thank me for reminding myself. Uh, da, 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 where is my wheel? There we go. Wheel. Insert as a uh, new layer. Okay. Uh, let me move the wheel. It's going to be behind the chalkboard. That's the that that's the plan. Add it as a little little secret back here. Ooh, I could grab the hat and put it on the Yes, that's the plan. I'm gonna grab the hat from my banner um my banner thing. Let's increase the size a little bit. Okay, okay. That, yeah, there we go. That that right there, that looks good, right? Yeah, that looks solid. Okay, so I need to open up. Uh, the actually no, I want the I want the banner, um, not the want it. Uh, here we go this part and now I want to remove actually should I just remove everything but the uh, the hat and see there we go yeah remove everything but the hat and the wheel and all that so that way it can all be together how it is intended okay file 
actually, can I edit the size of the form? Uh, edit the size. Nah, I don't really care at the same time. Uh, save it as PNG wheel hat logo. Okay, cool. Now I will close that, remove wheel layer, and then go grab wheel hat logo um, from over here. Bring it over here, insert as new layer. And, oh, look at that. A beautiful boy let's go beautiful nice little hat right there fits in and it put it in the right spot too lovely 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 I enjoy that that that, that right there that's perfection um, you know what I'll keep the stain along the edge it gives it a sense of realism to have stains along the wood edge as well Man, I'm so happy with how that turned out. It's not too in your face, but it's there. And you can kind of see it. You get you get the logo and everything. It's making me realize that I don't really... Oh, actually, no, I do need that. So that's going to be tomorrow. Or maybe another day. I don't know. I'll have to decide at a later date. Um... But uh, yeah, for now, uh, let me get this banner going. That's the most important part now. Do, do, do. Purple. Purple. extra bit I'm not gonna make it sharp making it sharp would take away from the kind of relaxed vibe that we have here brother just left for the game which is very cool unless someone phones in which case I'll be very it'll be very uncool um, but yeah you know I got all uh, all this done that's nice so now I will add a, another layer above it Gold. Actually, I'll just put gold. That's actually better. Um, and then let's go have this reference image um, increased in opacity so that way I can snag the gold coloring more easily. Uh, that looks to be it.
hide the reference image. Yes, this looks good. This looks good. It's a really good thing I didn't end up paying a, an artist this week because um, the little money that I would have had to spend, uh, I got a thing in the mail today that was like, hey, you need to pay uh, money to go and renew your uh, your ID for the government to know that you're, you know, still... Uh, to for you to have for your you know all your all your stuff and I was like well there goes all the money that I had saved up for um, the next little bit but good news is that I will have this which means that I can you know get jobs because those are necessary for survival Reminds me of Crown Royale bag. So much. Um, let's make it a, you know what? I'm gonna make it a golden post. Why not? It's more attached than it actually is. Dope, 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 dope. Um, cool. So that will be. Oh wait, no. Nope, got a spot right here. Okay, now that's dope. Uh, now I just gotta add the black lining around the edges, and we are golden. I want you to still see the sky in the back. And yeah, you know, don't want anything to go too, too wrong.
closer to the end. And draw ever closer to time for D&D. Thankfully, I'm going to be done. I think I'm going to leave uh, leave the the shadowing part um, until another time. But then again, I never I didn't do shadowing on anything. Well, actually, no, I did technically. Technically, there's shadowing on stuff. So I should realistically do it. Okay, so uh, looking good, looking good. I can set up so much stuff with this, have different like places for everything, have my guy be here. So, you know, let me just, let me just uh, save this overlay as PNG and then go over to here. of uh, my overlay that I just made. See, there we go, there we go. And now I just gotta move it to the back. And now chat, I'll have to downsize you just a smidge, just to make sure that you, you know, you fit on the chalkboard. But overall, not too much. And then move the alert notifications to right here. And in this case, this is the one, um, change the name of this to deck. So I won't have the, the thing here and I'll probably have to downsize my Self, uh, I'll, I'll move this, um, move Perry uh, over a smidge. Uh, we'll saw the fact that he doesn't have legs. Cool. So uh, that right there is all of the uh, all of the the stuff done. Uh, with him, uh, I guess I'll adjust it so certain other forms are also available, and you know, ones that don't exist, uh, just don't exist. There's uh, 
There we go. That, that looks very nice indeed. Very clean, very simple. I really like that. Now I'll just need to change the welcome back ending and uh, maybe the, the be right back uh, ones too. I'll, I'll do those ones tomorrow. I'll probably have them be the same location, but just with the, uh, that's where I'll add the desk. But, you know, it's been a solid, uh, solid stream. Uh, I've enjoyed it. We got a lot of stuff done and all of it looks very good. So uh, thank you for, for being here. I've, uh, I've enjoyed it greatly and I'm sorry for the slightly late start. Um, but thankfully we're able to get everything done in time. So yeah, wonderful. Have a nice rest of your guys' day, and I will see you tomorrow at 7 p.m. Eastern, where we will hopefully be doing the finality of the art streams for a little bit. Have a nice night. Bye.